vital tumors are seen at different sites within the orbit. The size, the location and the likely etiology decide the most appropriate route for surgery. There are different approaches to access the orbit. In this video, we will be discussing an anterior orbitotomy using the transconjunctival route in this 60-year-old male who presented with a 3-year-old history of left-sided proptosis. Imaging shows a well-circumscribed intraconal mass located inferolaterally in the left orbit, pushing the optic nerve upwards. The incision is made just below the lower edge of the tarsus and extends to the orbital rim inferiorly. My first step usually is to take an inferior rectus fraction suture. This can be taken with any suture material that is readily available that helps in moving the globe up and down during the surgery. The next step that I prefer to do which I find increases the surgical axis is a lateral cantholotomy and a cantholysis. A spring scissor can be used and the cantholysis can be augmented using a radio frequency cotton machine. Pre-placed lower lip traction sutures can also help in increasing the exposure and the axis. Palpate the orbital rim once before making the incision, so you have an idea of the direction of the incision. Just below the lower edge of the tarsus, about 4 mm, initiate the incision. I prefer to use a radio frequency cutlery that also coagulates as it cuts. Extend the conjunctival incision medially and laterally such that you can then visualize the lower lid retractors, which can also be incised using a cutlery. Introduce a closed pair of scissors through the incision such that the tip rests just a couple of millimeters within the edge of the orbit and splay it open. Now you have reached the orbit. Now introduce a malleable retractor such that you can visualize and dissect within the orbit. Using a malleable retractor, push away the orbital fat and bluntly dissect within the orbit. With your finger, digitally palpate the tumor. Here, the tumor is very anteriorly located and one can visualize the surface of it, which I now am cleaning using a Q-tip. Using a periosteum elevator, dissect all around the tumor, medially, laterally and most importantly, posteriorly as well. Once you have dissected all around, use a cryo probe to lift the tumor. In this case, sideways manipulation dislocates any attachments that the tumor may have. Here, the tumor doesn't come out easily as one would expect cavernous hemangiomas to, suggesting that there are some attachments still present around the tumor. Here, I'm using a suction cannula to dissect further and remove any attachments around the tumor. Once the tumor is completely dissected, finally it can be delivered using a cryoprobe. Cavernous hemangiomas tend to pop out rather easily. A force duction test may be performed to confirm that there is no damage to the extraocular muscle. Check for hemorrhage and make sure that there is no bleeding at the time of closure. The lateral canthus needs to be reformed and the lower lid retractors are sutured back. The conjunctiva needs to be sutured using interrupted white of sutures. This tumor was a cavernous hemangioma that was easily removed through a transconjunctival incision.